Uh, Dave from Australia was asking me, uh, what do I hate about Spain? Um, I wouldn't say I hate anything. I would say there's something to disappoint me. Um, bureaucracy disappoints me. Um, because a lot, of the, a lot of this stuff is localized. So it's all about local interpretation. I know the UK is a nightmare for bureaucracy as well. But the thing with the UK is, is national. We're here, we, get, we have nightmares of paperwork down in um, Tribeca, but I know people find it much, much easier in Benidorm and Alicante and other areas. You know, they don't, they go, what's your problem? It's really easy to do. Um, I think we must get an influx of illegals and stuff that make it a bit more of a nightmare. I don't know. But anyway, that's that's something that disappoints me. It's like you spend so much time trying to do something that should be so simple. The biggest disappointment and frustration, though, has to be the people that milk people for not knowing. Um, it's not all Spaniards, there's probably more expats than Spaniards that will rip you off. Um, I've had, I've wasted a lot of time and a lot of money with some people and it's both been Spaniards and British, Brits and the, the thing is they see it as it's normal because they rip that many people off they just like oh well that's 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 what it what it costs or it, it's not you're a thief I don't care what people say you're a thief um, when you're charging for things that you can't actually do but you promise or encourage people to do things just so you can make money that for me you're nothing more than a thief simple as that um, I was talking to somebody recently about trying to help with this paperwork because if I was fluent in Spanish I'm sure I could do it myself but it's my biggest letdown as I do not speak Spanish I'm, I'm learning but I find it difficult because of the way the word structure works I having you know male and female items and then feminine and male items then you have masculine items whatever and then you have the like six things to be the same word and things it becomes complicated to me I, I find it difficult um, doesn't mean I give up it just means it's taking me longer than I'd hope um, so that's my problem and a lot of people milk expats because they can um, a guy, guy I was meeting up with wanted 50 euros just to talk to me um, about something I know he can actually do because I wasn't asking him for his advice because he's an interpreter he's not a lawyer or anything um, and he's like, well, I can meet you for 50 euros. I'm like, the reason I contact you is not for you, it's that you advertise that you know other people. You know, I want the lawyer. I want somebody that actually knows what they're doing. But it just seems like his whole, oh, I want to help you thing that he advertises is yet another expat milker. And that's it, it disappoints me because I'm sure a lot of people feel saddened that, you know, Spain's such a beautiful country, lovely place to live, and yet it, these types of people leave a sour taste because they're not helping you, they're helping themselves, and I know some people say, well, it's just business, but it's not business when you know you're not going to actually achieve what people are asking for you at day one and trust you. It, it's it, it's manipulated purely for money. You know, it's like that mechanic that cost me a thousand euros for something that should cost 350 euros. He knew I was stuck without the vehicle and he knows it was the only, he's the only mechanic in the town. Yeah, afterwards talking to my neighbors and other people, they all said, yeah, the job's always bigger and bigger and bigger. None of them use him. Um, so if you ever need a mechanic in La Mata, go elsewhere. Don't use the one in La Mata. 
And I can't, I can't say that any stronger than that. The guy will rip you off. He's ripped everybody off. Um, that I'm aware of. I mean, he may, he may do some charity jobs some now, now and again, but from everything I've heard from five different people, he's overcharged every single person, but often he doesn't do the job right either. Um, so it's, it's just something to be aware of. But beyond that, I really do not have any problems in Spain. Even now, it's rainy, we've had storms. But we, I've spent time with my father, my father spent time with his grandkids. Spent time with my wife, you know, because we haven't been able to go out much. But I know in the UK, it would still be the same. You know, the, the rain would still be here. <coughs> my cost of living is a lot less in Spain. I know a lot of people say, well, it's comparable to the UK. It's not. It I mean, maybe for some people, but for, in all honesty, it is cheaper for me to live in Spain. It really is. And I, you know, I mean, some people have said, well, the rent would be six, seven hundred euros. It's not. I pay three hundred. For me to, if I spend six hundred euros on a place here, because um, I did have a look at one, it would it would actually give me a villa with a swimming pool. <coughs> the reason we didn't want the swimming pool is because obviously Zoe, with her autism, um, it's a bit of a risk around the water because she would jump in with, without really knowing the, the risks there. So, although I'd love a swimming pool, but with the kids being so young, etc., I declined. We, we took the apartment instead because we're walking distance to the beach, but you know it's safer. You don't have to worry about the kids go, go in the bedroom and then out into the pool, etc. So if you wanted a bigger place, yes, it would cost you more. But at the same time, how much would a four-bedroom house cost you in the UK? It wouldn't be 700. It'd probably be around 1,200. So just on that alone, as a comparison, is more. Um, cheaper in Spain. Food prices have not really changed, you know, because a lot of people have been on about the Brexit thing. I haven't seen anything change at all. It's, it's still costing me the same. <coughs> Eating out, I think, right across Europe, thanks to the minimum wage, the, the cost of eating out has gone up. But we still eat out cheaper. We had a meal the other night of 70 euros for two kids and three adults. So five of us, 70 euros. In the UK, that would have probably cost me 15, 20 pounds per person. So at least 90 pounds. So even with that, it's cheaper. Even if you just did a direct conversion from euros into pounds, it would still work out cheaper. Um, I only pay about 100 euros a year for council tax and stuff. I think in the UK I was paying 65 a week, uh, 65 a month. My water bill is 80 euros every two, three months. My electric bill is about 80 euros a month. Um, now bear in mind we've got the aircon on 24/7 now because we've got the heating, using it for heating. Um, my computer's all is on. We're we use a fair bit of electric, so yeah, but I know in the UK I'd be paying more. So I, I can't actually see where things would cost me more. Now, the only thing that is difficult is work. And somebody brought up, you still haven't got a job in Spain. You're right, I don't have a job in Spain. What I have is I'm self-employed working for a company in the UK from home. <coughs> Why would I want to be earning the local rate here is probably up to about a thousand euros a month. Torrebeja is one of the lowest paid places in Spain. There's people, on average, I think this area is 750 euros a month. I make more than that in a week doing surveying. You know, it's like using your skills. If I understood Spanish, I would probably be working in Madrid and commuting. 
you know, not every day, but I'd, I'd be commuting at the weekends, etc. You know, going, going back and forwards. But the, the point being is, my Spanish isn't good enough to do what I do on a normal basis. Um, so I have to rely on working remotely, and so far, so good. I've got, I've got steady work. And I think that's, that's one of the key things, is you have to understand that work here is not really an option unless you're going to start your own business or you've got a pension and just looking for a bit of top up money. It's not really something that you're going to find easily. I'm sure there's job options out there, there's real estate agents and whatever, but it's not going to be an easy graft to find that work. <coughs> this is why I always recommend doing stuff online. Now, one of the things I will say is that over time, things like the YouTube video do grow. Um, I've not been proactive too much lately because quite simply I've been too busy. I've been down with the flu as well, as you can probably hear my voice. But ultimately, if you stuck at it and developed something that is of value, it will grow over time. Um, and that, that's the thing. I mean, it, if you only need a thousand euros a month here to live and enjoy Spain, then it's much easier to earn it like from the US or UK at those rates which are higher than trying to make it in the Spanish market where a lot of the salaries are very low. Um, but like I said, I mean, if you're here with a pension that pays your bills and you decided to do something like um, maybe teaching English or doing house cleans and key holding. I will say, I was talking to Brian the other day, he said key holding is actually illegal in Spain. Um, but these different things, these small little ventures that bring in 40 euros a week for each one or whatever during the, the holiday season, <coughs> there is people that survive on it. So it is possible. I mean, I know people that uh, do pool cleans that they do that full time. You know, they go around just cleaning people's swimming pools. There is lots of little alternatives to making a living here, and a lot of it does need that little entrepreneurial spirit to find something that works. I mean, one of the things I've been struggling with in La Mata is finding a nice little location to start a small business. Because if I haven't got the location, there's no point trying to think beyond that in having a little shop or something, you know. Um, because if I can't find a building that has the right location to bring in the customers, etc., and be in the right area, then there's no point even starting to look at that type of business. So that, that's one of the things, you know, for the matter. It's pretty restrictive on starting a small business if you need a front of house type location. There's plenty, plenty of small units around, but I've seen them open and close over the, the last two years. So, you know, I'm not looking to move into somewhere where I know it opens and closes because there's not enough foot traffic. I do know that the bar near us would make enough money on a Wednesday to pay its bills. Because market day, there's enough people coming by for tea, coffee, and small snacks. Because uh, there's no, like, restaurant that does, like, um, small food. You know, because, you know, you know, it's like people that go to the market, they don't want a, a full-blown menu. They don't want to spend 10 euros on a meal or whatever. They want a cup of tea, coffee, or, a, you know, a slice of cake or something. You know, a hot dog or something simple. But, you know, I know that bar could actually make enough money on a Wednesday to break even. <coughs> so, but, I don't really want to be running a bar. You know, it's, it's something I've done years ago and I enjoyed it, but I didn't like the long hours. I want to be doing less these days, not more. So, having a small store that does specific things um, would suit me. Yeah, you know, because obviously you're not working the same sort of hours. 
but we'll wait and see. And I know I'm going on about the store, but you got to remember, um, once all this paperwork goes through, April can work, so April can take the store over. Um, so it's not, it's not really a issue of me, you know, if I'm doing my other work, etc. Will it affect it? No, not really. Um, one thing I will say, I try to keep my wife independent. She, you know, I try. My wife's fairly um, independent herself, but I like keeping it, her driven with her own ideas and stuff, doing stuff that she wants to do. And we're almost home, so nice chatting. And yes, Spain's Spain's a nice country. Um, even on a rainy day like this, it's a nice country. But I will say, if you need a lawyer, you need a mechanic, you need a translator, you need somebody to help you develop your network. It's one thing that Brian brought up about watching my videos that I mentioned about networking. It's one of the most important things you'll probably do in Spain. Develop your network because if you don't, you rely on people that heavily advertise, etc. And a lot of them are just out for the money, nothing else. Um, I know it sounds a bit, maybe a bit, um, what do you call it? A bit pessimistic or whatever. But it, I, I believe in doing a good job for whatever I do. You know, I, I won't do a crap job. So, if I can't do a, the job right, I just wouldn't do it. These guys will milk you for everything you've got, then go, oh, we've tried. Well, they knew at day one that they couldn't do it. But they, by that time, they've taken hundreds of euros off you, and they go, well, you know, it's the hours we put in, or whatever. And you're like, yeah, but you knew you couldn't do it. Why did you promise you could, and then couldn't do it? And that, that is the problem. Because expats rely on these people to help get the paperwork and bureaucracy done, and a lot of them have no idea what they're doing. They follow a basic pattern of things that have gone through before. So when a form changes or something, they're often not aware of it. <coughs> because they processed the same way the last 50 times but now something's changed. They've got to start from scratch, but often at your expense. Because they won't say, well, we, we promise we do it for like 100 euros or whatever. They'll go, oh, the system's changed. They've already got your first 50 euros or whatever, or they got your 100 euros. They'll say, but it's a new form. We'll have to charge you 20 euros for that form um, to fill in the form for you, or, oh, you need to translate, so that's another 40 euros. They just keep adding and adding and adding, even though they'd already promised to do something at a, at a fixed rate. And that's what I hate. I really hate that stuff. I wouldn't accept it off a contractor, and I certainly wouldn't accept it off these people here. So be warned. It's worth getting in touch with people like myself. Worth getting in touch with it, getting on Facebook groups and see who other people use and who they've actually had stuff done with. Don't just assume because somebody says they're okay that they they actually mean it. Just turn around and say, have you used them? Because probably about 50% will go, oh no, but a friend has. Well, you want to get hold of the friend to make sure because unless you actually know what they did and whatever, they could say, well, yeah, they helped me do my um, transfer my ca my car onto Spanish plates. Yeah, but I wasn't after that. I was actually after somebody being able to um, do my residency for me. Or I wanted somebody to do my um, survey, survey checks for a property. So be aware that although someone says, oh, yeah, they're okay, it may have been for something completely different. And not everybody can be a specialist of everything. And that, that, that's why it's worth double-checking. Get yourself on the Facebook groups. Put in the town that you want to live in and you'll get a search of the different groups that are in there and join up with some of them. See what goes on, chat with a few people, 
and get get a feeling for the place. La Mata is certainly my home, and there isn't many of us here. Um, but there's other areas like San Luis, um, down in Pilar. It all depends what area you want to move to. But find the people that are in those areas and they've been there for some time. Um, and then check with more than one person to get the right price and the right person to get the right job done. Thanks for listening.